What happens to Flint, Michigan, where many residents' water is still unsafe to drink under a Donald Trump presidency? Joining me now, Congressman and Flint native Dan Kildee, Flint Mayor Karen Weaver, and Flint resident and activist Melissa Mays. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm going to start with Melissa first. As the citizen uh, living in Flint, uh, living through this for now two years going, um, what do you expect out of this just passed bill in Congress? Does it make you feel hopeful? And have your pipes been addressed? No, I have a copper service line. So even though my newest lead test from Virginia Tech is 1,740 parts per billion, I'm not going to be on the list because we don't have children under six. And again, I have a copper service line, so I don't have lead. Um, what we're hoping, though, is that the entire infrastructure be, um, gets replaced because the highest levels of lead in my home is coming from the outside. It's coming from the city's distribution system. So it needs to be addressed. It's not just service lines that are damaged inside the homes um, are damaged. As well as everything coming from the water treatment plant. So, we need a full upgrade for our city. As well as these bills dismissed, the shutoff notices hit yesterday. I got my shutoff notice the same time as I got my notice that my lead was so high. So, it was a really hard day for me because I'm looking saying, okay, my water is going to be shut off because the state is forcing the city to shut off people's water. And yet, my lead is so high. What am I going to do with shutoff poison? But, I mean, we still need our water to shower. I mean, that's, that's where, where we're stuck with. Yeah. And, and Mayor Weaver, um, that is a situation. It was the situation when I uh, came and visited you in Flint many, many months ago. The idea then was that the state was going to help out the city of Flint in terms of those water bills. What happened and what's going to happen uh, to residents like Melissa? And that's what we've been talking about, and we've been continuing to press the state that we need those those uh, water credit reliefs because we know that people can't pay for water that they can't use. So one of the things we've talked about with them and what we've been able to negotiate is just to have people pay for their sewer because we said, well, we can use it to flush. We know that. And, um, you know, for things like washing clothes, those kinds of things. And so we're continuing to press for that. And that's why the point that uh, Melissa brought up is a really good one. That that's why it was imperative that we get this funding because we've only been able to prioritize certain areas in the city of Flint to start removing those lead service lines. And if we had the funds that we are going to be getting now, we can start looking at the entire city of Flint. And that's what needs to happen. And Congressman Kildee, when will that money get to Flint? And how extensively can service lines be replaced with $170 billion? Well, one thing to be clear on, uh, this can go beyond service lines. Uh, as Melissa pointed out, it's not just problems with lead service lines that will cause lead to uh, go into the homes of these families. She has a copper service line, yet still has high levels of lead. So we need to deal with the distribution system as well, with the treatment system as well. And this money will be able to, uh, to support those sorts of changes. It won't be enough. We need the state of Michigan to step up to do more. Uh, but clearly, this is a big step forward. It took far too long for Congress to act. We've been fighting for this since January. Uh, we had to literally, in September, threaten to shut down the government of the United States before I negotiated directly with Speaker Ryan on the $170 million authorization that passed the House. Finally, we get this done. In terms of how quickly we move, the President will sign this bill forthwith, probably today. At that point in time, the state of Michigan and the city of Flint will have to put a plan together and get that plan put, uh, uh, you know, uh, submitted so that these dollars can flow. Um, and I know that Mayor Weaver is ready to go. We, we know we have lots of needs. We will need the state of Michigan to step up and act quickly, but also to finish the job. They need to do more. Uh, the federal government has done twice what the state has done, and most of the responsibility for what happened in Flint falls on the state's doorstep. Uh, they can't get away just thanking Congress for what we've done. They've got to get to work and do much more for the people of Flint. This crisis is not over. And, and Mayor Weaver, that is, I think, the, the main point. The governor of Michigan put in place a manager who did this to your city. It was the governor of Michigan, the Republican governor of Michigan, who did this to your city. What has the state done to help the residents of your city? And do you have confidence in the state government of Michigan to get this done? And what will be the timeline? Well, you know, one of the first things that 
if it had not been for uh, the emergency declaration, I don't think they would have done anything. And I remember even uh, when I was putting this into place, I got so much pushback that nothing would happen, but I believed that we could make some things happen because I know with myself and our Michigan delegation, we were going to get this done. Right now, what the state has done, in addition to some of those credits and the 25 million to get us started, that's what's been put in place. But uh, like Congressman Kildee said, we need much, much more. And so we've got to continue to press upon them that the city of Flint deserves more because this was a situation that we did not get ourselves into. We didn't have a voice when this happened. And so now it's time to make good on that. We're, we are so grateful to, you know, the um, federal government for what's happened. But as Congressman Kildee said, we need the state to do some more as well. And, and very quickly before I go um, over to Melissa, Mayor, part of why this happened is that the state government in Michigan wanted to switch which Flint off of uh, the water system that came out of Detroit onto this new water management district that would essentially financially benefit the suburbs instead of Detroit. When is that supposed to happen? When is that switch supposed to be finished? When, okay, when is the switch for? To, to the new water management district so you won't be on Flint River water anymore. Well, we're back on, on Lake Huron water. Okay. We, we've made that switch. So we're on Lake Huron, which is what we were getting through Detroit. Got it. But the problem was the damage had been done to the to pipes. The pipes. Okay. And so that's why we've had to continue to treat the water. But we need new infrastructure. That's what's going to solve and this issue. And Melissa, do you have confidence in the state government in Michigan to get this done in a timely manner? Absolutely not. Unfortunately, they did this to us, and we have to wait on them to get this fixed. And what I'm seeing right now is they are saying every day, the water's better, people are safe. We had to file an injunction to demand that they deliver water to the people who cannot get to these water distribution system or sites, people who don't have cars, people who are homebound, sick, elderly. And the state said it's unnecessary and it's a burden on them to deliver water to these people. However, in the, in the meantime, people are going without. People are dealing with this water that's becoming worse over time because the infrastructure is continuing to fail, like mine. My every water test I take goes higher and higher, and then we got to worry about bacteria and all the other contaminants. Um, we have been doing our own testing, and it does not match up with what the state's saying. And so at, at every turn, they are not listening to the residents, and they are not taking care of the most vulnerable. And there's still too many people falling through the cracks. Wow. Well, we will definitely keep up with the story. Congressman Dan Kildee, Flint Mayor Karen Weaver, Melissa Mays, thank you all for being here, and best of luck to you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.